all glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Subscribe, smash that like button, and smash my cash out to support hard truths. Thank you for your support. Let's get right to it. Before I read the comments and address New Breed and UP Farms, I'll speak on these white supremacist trolls, particularly the one who posted like 10 scriptures after I uploaded part two, white supremacy is a package deal. The older I get, the more I realize how threatened the so-called white man is by Jacob and just how dangerous the spirit of fear can be. I'll be more specific. Imagine a demon of fear that's in a person's bloodline that periodically remind them how much a POS their great grandfather was and his bloodshed is required of them. Now they got all this money, but can't even live in peace every time they see you, so-called black man, who is Jacob. And I'm also talking to our black women to a degree, but most of our women are so silly that they've taken on the spirit of our captors. It is the black man who's made in the image and likeness of God. So every time that spirit of fear comes upon a so-called white cop, he say, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Yeah, I fear for my life. You see that? Y'all are hunted by the sins of your forefathers. So when you see a man like myself, you're intimidated by the sound of my voice to where you're comfortable around the black men who compromise their tone to make you feel safe and comfortable around them. Get your ass out of here. It's just more easy to repent. You must remember in Revelation chapter 1, the Apostle John said he saw God and fell on his face like a dead man. You have to do your due diligence to see exactly how the Most High is described in the scriptures. How does he look? Okay, you will see that the black man is made in his image and likeness. All right. You have the right to see that which you are threatened by. Okay, the scriptures say, how can you hate your brother who you do see and love God who you don't see? Okay, so that should expose the folly of how you judge a person by the color of their skin. Because in the day of judgment, as I've stated in part one and part two, a white supremacy is a package deal. The Most High is going to reveal his face through them clouds when he cracked them skies open. So-called white men always want the cards decked in his favor. Even when the Most High comes to the table and is like, you know, even I had to pay with my life. So who are you? <laughs> the foolishness of white supremacy, these white supremacists, is his daughter saying, Oh Lord, I just want to wake up eat my breakfast, walk the dog, mow my lawn, and play nine rounds at the golf course, O oh Lord. Frivolous. Thou fool, did you know that your soul is required of thee? That's Bible. The man who wakes up and say, I just want peace and just want to be merry in my sin and don't repent of my sin. Thou fool, this day, the scriptures say, your soul is required of thee. I'm at the point now where you so-called white folk, when you come here commenting on this channel, just send me a check of reparations and I'll take you a little bit more seriously. But don't come here trying to teach me scriptures because the oracles of God were never committed to you. To this day, your people are indignant and parasitic. You've created nothing. You've paved the way for nothing. All you've done is stole and robbed and raped. All right? You don't serve the Most High because you haven't been through nothing. And then you try to come here with your folly. No, repent of your sins so you can be alleviated of the demons that's going to drag your soul to hell. Y'all come here and agree when I expose Ringo TV and new breed, but when I talk about white supremacy, you get quiet and subtle, or you just speak these vague innuendos using the Bible. Get your ass out of here.
one of these white supremacists came here posting scriptures. And then when you go to his page, he cussing his father out live on camera, you know, just laying up in the house, dookie in on his toilet, eating his food. He can't even obey the scripture that says, honor thy mother and father so that your days may be long. You savage. You need to rebuke that demon in your bloodline. Now, I understand that some poor whites didn't reap the benefits of their forefathers, but that still does not negate the fact that the demon is still in your bloodline because you don't know exactly how Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 9, the Lord who visits the iniquity of the father onto the children and his children's children up to the third and fourth generation, you don't know how that's going to manifest in your life. Okay, you don't know when and how that demon is going to pay you a visit. Okay, Proverbs 11 verse 1 says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Okay, so I do not teach that the so-called white man cannot be saved. Anyone can be saved because it's about how good Christ was and is. Okay, it's about the goodness that he did on the cross for all men and their sins. Okay? The scriptures say where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. So long as man has breath in his nostrils, he can repent. Okay, but I'm not going to sit up here preaching a vague gospel of Jesus Christ and not exhibiting the details of exactly how a man is supposed to repent, okay? Because all sin is not the same. All people don't sin the same, all right? So this is where you must be thorough in the scriptures. Let's read from Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18. It says, When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die. This is talking about God. When God says to the wicked, you shall surely die. And you, the messenger, the person who's preaching the gospel, when you give him no warning, or should I say the person that should be preaching the gospel, for those of you who are fence sitters, okay, you, when I minister the word to you, you're supposed to witness the word as well to those about what the word of God that was preached, if it's the truth, okay? So continuing, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. You see that? So this is why, because remember, Christ also said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father who is in heaven. So those of you fence sitters, you don't contribute anything to the word of God. You don't bear any fruit. You, 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 you're talking about the parable of the talents, the talent that God has given you to contribute to the kingdom of God. You do nothing, but you sit and listen and you bear no fruit. Okay, this is what the scripture is saying. You can go to hell for being a fence sitter. All right. Or just being one of these people that's so vague that just say, oh, everybody who just repent of their sins are going to heaven. If you just say the sinner's prayer, no, you got to bear fruits that, that are worthy of works. Bear works worthy of repentance. All right. So now that I got that out the way, let's go through these comments. Go 10 Huggins says UP Farms will be owned by Straightway. Well, it is alleged that Pastor Rufus said he will no longer be doing business with Newbreed, and already those guys don't know how to till the land. So I do not advise Newbreed to make a deal with the devil known as Dirty Low Dow or the so-called white man, because both of them do have the resources to industrialize UP farms but at what cost? Okay. Speaking to New Breed, who's concerned about his brand. Okay. Walking with Christ says New Breed needs to repent for his language 
and for the curses he spoke he spoken on Ringo. We are commanded not to use profane language and honor and love all men, whether they're brethren or enemies. The fruits are really showing. Yeah, I believe that's in Colossians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, I believe, where it says, uh, talks about filthy language in your mouth. No, it may be around Colossians chapter 3, somewhere between verse 5 and 10, 5 and 9, where it says we are not to express filthy language out of our mouth. Okay, that's true. The scriptures say, love even your enemy. But this is not done without rebuke. Okay, it also says, be angry, but sin not. Obviously, weirdo TV provoked that man to anger. Okay. In my opinion, Newbreed was very diplomatic and long suffering with Weirdo TV. Yeah, I understand. When another man tries to embarrass you, saying he's going to turn your mishaps into a television show. But look, I can understand Newbreed's frustration. I mean, he even recently, he went on a live stream with Weirdo TV and addressed him like a man. Rallo and Brainwaves, they responded like men and aired out their differences. Okay? Weirdo TV was the only one there behaving effeminate. Okay? Next comment, Roxanne, I am awake, says, No breed allowed to be mad. He helped someone move and got treated like crap for helping someone move for free. And everyone is supporting the evil ones, tearing him down because he simply thought he would be paid for his work. Does that make him bad? Or they dragged him, leave him alone. Yeah. Red TV should have paid him much more uh, for his work. But here are the issues I have with New Breed. Again, talking about a false balance. Let's be balanced here. Let's be objective, okay? Because a false balance, according to Proverbs 11.1, 1, the false balance is an abomination. So number one, New Breed should have known that this is the risk you took dealing with weird old TV to begin with. I mean, this man's rap sheet was weird long before New Breed ever dealt with him, okay? Number two, if you think Weirdo TV is a headache, just wait till you deal with Dirty Low Dow and these white supremacists involved on the UP Farms landscape, potentially. Okay? And number three, obviously, I stand by what I said. Polygyny is sinful. Okay? And I've opened the door to New Breed if he wants to debate about this. Okay? I've provided him plenty of scripture. It's in the Bible. All right, and I even did a series on this. For those of you brothers who keep, how is polygyny sinful? Look, look, there were so many things that were taken away from us from the Old Testament to the New. It's not only polygyny. That's why in the series, I addressed the lifespan of man, uh, the landscape of men, particularly the Israelites. We no longer have our own land, obviously. They'll never debate that type of stuff. They'll never debate the serpent seed, you know, how that affected the lifespan of man. Sin keeps taking things from us, okay? Sin causes separation. Matter of fact, one thing that I should have placed more emphasis on is when Christ comes back and crack them skies open, there won't be any marriage. Legal marriage as we know it now between a man and a woman will cease to exist. That's why Christ will have to destroy the whole earth. That's one thing I wish I would have placed more emphasis on, but I'm making that correction right now in this video. Sin will get to the point where the scriptures talk about the cup of iniquity. Once it gets full, that's when Christ got to come back. That's why the scriptures say, if he didn't shorten the days, no flesh will be saved. That's the scripture that defeats polygyny altogether because it shows you from the Old Testament to this current day, 
how sin keeps taking, subtracting things from us. All right. So Roxanne, let's not be biased. Let's be objective because it seems like you're making it like new breed. It's just innocent in this whole ordeal. Okay. The Most High never commanded us to bring all the nations together on some utopian landscape at the end of times. So that's not biblical. All right. Okay. Next comment. Quincy Youngblood Judah says, No breed don't know the scriptures either. He uses them for money. But Ringo is full blasphemous against the word. John chapter 5, 40 through 47. Let's take a look at it. Okay. John 5, 40 through 47. It says, but if you are not willing to come to me that you may have life, if you do not receive honor from men, but I know you that you do not have the love of God in you. Verse 43, I have come in my father's name and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. Yeah, the scripture is placing a lot of emphasis on name, the name of Jesus Christ. God framed the, the world by the words of his power. So words have power. That's why the name of Jesus Christ is so powerful. And it means a lot in our walk in Christ. Okay. Ringo teaches falsely that it doesn't mean anything because he's a heretic. All right. Verse 44. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not receive that honor the honor that comes from the only God. Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Yeah, they like to pick and choose. Okay, they like to pick and choose polygyny from the law. Okay, but they don't dive into the details of what Moses actually executed in the law, which was a lot of stonings to death. Okay, but that's a whole other video. Let's go to the next comment. He says he, talking about John MacArthur, he says you can take the mark of the beast, you can make it to heaven. Yeah, John MacArthur's another wolf in sheep clothing. He's very austere and subtle in his approach, but he's just another bona fide devil. Okay. Uh, Jack Quish Fleek says, I subscribe. I unsubscribed from Ringo TV a long time ago. Also, his buddy, Newbury. Yeah, great decision. Polygyny is sinful, and they both believe in that. Okay. Samson Wood says, keep calling out Demon Dow, my brother. Denizel says, Ringo too. Yeah. Don't forget about Dirty Low Dow. I mean, hell is really excited about that dude. He's incredibly wicked. God Jules says, I'm going with Gino, Demon of the Year. You can see Dow and Ringo but Gino come like he's preaching the word of God. He's dangerous. That punk C-Rock talk trash about Pastor D. Yeah, I'm assuming you saying what I had said. You can see Dow coming from a mile away. Yeah, those who don't see Dirty Low Dow coming from a mile away. I mean, they're on the enhanced witchcraft. All right. Look, Gino Jennings is the biggest demon of all false prophets that I've thoroughly examined. I'm sure there are some more wicked than even him. But for this year, just for this year, 2024, Dirty Low Dow is the demon of the year. Okay. In 1997, Carl Malone was the MVP, but everyone knew that Michael Jordan was still the best player. Okay. In this case, Dirty Low Dow is the demon of the year, but Geno Jennings is a bigger demon than Dirty Low Dow because he's more subtle, 
and he's misled more souls to the lake of fire. Okay. I don't know what you're implying that C Rock talked trash about Dirty Low Dow. I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> because it's impossible to talk trash about a demon. <laughs> I mean, listen to what you're saying. C Rock Smooth. Let me repeat that. C Rock Smooth. He's talking about C Rock Smooth talk trash about a demon named Dirty Low Dow. <laughs> That makes no sense. It makes no sense, man. <laughs> okay, but I understand what you're saying, though. Next comment. Uh, Big Facts says, My discernment kept going off on Dingo when he kept saying heavy meat, even in situations where sex wasn't even the topic. Recently, he came out with a video saying it's okay to go cheat on your pregnant spouse because they can't do nothing for you with someone at work that was in his men don't cheat video part one is misleading so many men to slaughter yeah the comment had cut off for whatever reason but yeah that's why i called him the perverted poet okay but he was defending polygyny without any merit uh using limited scriptures and twisting scriptures which makes his argument weak, okay? He tries to make it like he can just go do live streams and that he's raw and uncut, but his message has is, is filled with flaws, okay? Filled with a lot of mishaps, a lot of folly, and it's a flawed, satanically inspired gospel, a false gospel, okay? He's under a seducing spirit. Okay, so this last comment is from Sylvia Ruth. The first part of the comment, she pretty much asks, do I believe that Geno Jennings knows that he's a false teacher? Uh, listen, many of Geno Jennings' followers need to ask, what is a 21-year-old doing as pastor of a church when Christ didn't even start his ministry until age 33? Okay, now mind you, we're talking about 21-year-old Geno Jennings. Okay, the root of the tree was corrupt. <laughs> if he started the church at 21 at a novice, okay, that tree is corrupt. So even though he's 61 years old, his falseness is just only magnified. The older he's got, the wiser he's got in Satan. Okay, this evil wisdom. He just knows how to build church buildings. OK, your demons really don't start to manifest until you're about 35. <laughs> That's why they call it a midlife crisis. 21 is just a baby, a novice. So how is this man going to say that God called him to be a pastor at 21 years old? He wasn't even married when he was 21. OK, he just over time mastered the ability to manipulate people and use scripture to do it, okay? 21-year-old Geno Jennings is the root of his 40-year church empire, okay? His luxurious career as a pastor who just learned how to con the sheep out of their money, all right? But I'm going to talk more about this in a false apostle series I have coming up on Geno Jennings, but yeah, it is scary. She says it's very scary, okay? She's asked God to break her down so she can know the truth on all levels. Deception is real. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for being patient with us slow learners. Hey, look, we all got to, even I got to study to show myself approved. Okay, I'm not just coming out here saying stuff. I've done my research. Okay, and you've done your research as well. And I appreciate you for not being biased and doing your due diligence as well, uh, Sylvia Ruth. All right. But uh, that's all I got for this video. Again, let me know your thoughts and enjoy the rest of your day.